Good afternoon. It's so lovely to see you here. Thanks for joining me live. I want to know what's on your needles. If anything, it's the summer. You might be busy getting ready just to get the kids at home and <laughs> all that kind of thing. So, yeah, is there anything on your needles? Let's find out if there is. Kaz has been knitting dishcloths and are the mats separate or is it a kind of dishcloth mat? Wondering about that. Um, yeah, I'm keeping out the heavy rain too. Oh my goodness. We've had such downpours in the last few days. I'm just, I haven't switched on Wimbledon for a while. Um, not since Saturday. I certainly didn't watch it yesterday, but I can't imagine what they're going through. On court, off court, on court, off court. <laughs> hey there. Oh, look, that's Nick. Hi, Nick. It's a dishcloth mat. That sounds like fun. Okay. I'd like to see that. Um, on my needles at the moment is stuff I can't tell you about. Because it's secret. <laughs> but you'll be pleased to know that we are knitting in the autumn and winter with yarns that we've used before. So nothing really new in that respect. We're just using the colours differently. We're using the needles differently. So if you've already got needles from previous knits and previous kits, then you're ready to go. Um, and we can, you know, come together again, not just now for the knit along next week, but in the autumn and winter for knit alongs as well. And you'll be good to go. You can just get the pattern, get the yarn and you're ready. And it will feel quite good too because you, you have used that size needles and those needles before. Hi Joe, it's lovely to have you here. Is anything on your needles? Is there? Is there? Is there? Um, on my needles actually I can tell you the kind of thing that we're creating. So there will be Christmas knits and there will be knits to keep you warm. So I think that is the theme. We've got home knits now. So we're going to have fewer home knits in the next collection and it's going to be, let's keep cosy. So that's what I'm hoping you will be excited by with the next collections coming up in a few months time. But let's talk about now, shall we? I know you've come on here to find out about the knitting kits that were launched about 10 days ago. And I've got a full set of them all here. You're going to see all of the different colours. You see, now the sun's gone in and it's about to pour with rain again. I'm going to have to put a light on. Oh, goodness me, what is it like? I hope that's a bit better. And you can remember not to blink. Don't blink, don't blink, don't blink. <laughs> Those weeping angels... They'll catch you unawares. Kaz is going to knit a blanket for Christmas. Fabulous. That will keep you in a warm, not just for Christmas, but for like three or four months afterwards as well. Joe is knitting a sweater for nephew. Not knitted in weeks. Cousin super sick. Oh, goodness me. I hope that recovers soon because obviously it's taking up your energy as well, looking after her. Oh my goodness. Joe, it's stable at the moment. Praise God, yeah. Goodness. Hope everything gets okay with that. Um, we're in a bunny time at the moment. Let's not talk about that. Thank you, NHS. Thank you, NHS. Thank you, NHS. We have all sorts of stuff here, and I want to talk through them. Let's talk about the net along first because I know some of you are already in, and if you want in, there's one week to go, we can definitely pack up parcels and get them to you before we start on Monday, and we can pack, oh, <gasps> Chantel has got it already, oh, I'm so excited, I just, distraction by the comments there, Chantel is in Canada, received the parcel, yes, 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 the um, delivery service says, we'll get it to Canada and the US within six to seven days. And I'm thinking, really? Is that really going to happen? And it has. 
Yes. Oh, brilliant. I'm so thrilled. Yes, yes, yes. That's excitement. That is excitement. So Chantal is all ready to knit the knit along next week. That's what we're knitting in the knit along. And I just want to go a few over a few things because I've already had questions about how difficult this looks. This is using, if you were with me for the last knit along, we're using the same needle. So if you have one of these, this is what I used. I used long five and a half millimeter needles. You could also choose to use a circular needle if you choose. Five and a half millimeter is what you need. It just needs to be long enough. So that's 35 centimeters. And this one is 80, so you can just go for it. In the same way that we knitted with 80 centimeter circular needle before. So these, they can be knitted by relatively new knitters. They look complicated. That's the beauty of knitting, is that you knit something, it feels cool, it feels good, and people will be impressed because they think it's difficult, you think it looks difficult, but you start knitting it and it feels a lot easier than it actually is. So we're doing the knit stitch, we're doing the purl stitch, we're obviously casting on and casting off, and the one abbreviation that we're using in this is yarn over, and that's it. But it's the way you use all of those stitches together that makes this beautiful shape. I think that's the beauty of knitting. It's the beauty of crochet as well. It's the way that you use the stitches that you know that creates interesting shapes and textures and moves colors together too. So we're not knitting with two colors at once. One color comes off your needle and you start the next color and then you start the next color and then you start the next color. So you don't need to mix the colours up as you're knitting or anything like that. And basically we're knitting the same piece four times and then tying them all together. It sounds a lot easier. I hope it sounds easier than it might do if you just look at it and go, that's complicated. It's not too complicated. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you make a mistake with this, no one's going to notice. This is the kind of thing that I realized when I was knitting it. I missed a stitch and I went, it's gonna notice, everyone will know. But no, they're not gonna know. It's all scrunched up. There's 500 other stitches on here and no one's gonna notice. So don't worry about it if you make a mistake and it's the tiniest stitch, that's fine. So we'll be there along with you. <laughs> <laughs> to knit with you and the whole idea is that we knit this together so one scrunchie two scrunchie and you'll go through the different colors with me now because these are three of the colors four of the colors actually this is a pale blue and a denim blue so the pale blue is called silvery blue which is a great way to describe it because it is it's just this very pale um silvery cloud like blue so I really like that color and you know how much I like denim we have denim yarn denim off cuts yarn in the shop already so that's a denim yarn and I wear, it, wear jeans constantly and jean skirts constantly especially in the winter so there you go so that's that one and these colors that is a the whitish is called seashell so it's a beautiful pale cream it is, it's like double cream. That's a really good way to describe it. And the green is called pear. So that's four of the colors already. It's the green, yes, the green is lovely. Um, so that's fabulous. Just pick two colors, or you can pick single colors and knit the whole thing all in one color. You don't have to mix the colors up if you don't want to. So if your bathroom is very minimalist, you may just say, I want it all in seashell. That's fine. The whole idea is that this is knitted and then you knit another one with the kit because then one can be in the wash and you can use the other one. The whole idea is that you can wash this with your towels 
once a week or once every four or five days and then it will be on rotation so you're not using the same thing for months on end um yeah so think of it like a flannel like a towel and you just wash it and use it and wash it and use it so it's cool right excited by that I was inspired because I saw so many crochet patterns for these and I really didn't see knitting patterns for these and I knew I wanted to do a home collection this summer so I just sat down and figured out how to make it and I hope you enjoy knitting it because I think it's it's a lovely knit and it's something that will you will use every day and if you don't shower every day you can use it in the bath you can use it when you're washing your face um you can just use it in the bathroom and use it every day so that's exciting so that's the first thing join the knit along to join the knit along you just need the kit or the digital pattern if you've got lots of dk cotton yarn in the shop in your stash then just get the digital pattern and if you feel that you don't want to pay the postage then get the yarn elsewhere and by all means join us with the digital pattern but in the uk most definitely and as Chantal has just shown us you can get the kit quite quickly if you're abroad we're not sending to europe at the moment sorry if you're in europe the restrictions have come in even more in July and it's got even more complicated. So I'm not alone. Many independent shops like me have said it's a lot of work just to send one parcel. So as it's getting more complicated, we're going to have to stop for the moment. But if you're in the UK, Northern Ireland, you're on. OK, so Rowan Yarns and it's Summerlight DK. That is called Linen. And it, you can't, don't think you can quite see the beigey-ness of that. It is a really, really, really pale. It's like the top of a coffee. You know, when you, I love a flat white. It's the kind of colour that that goes at the top of a coffee. So it's linen, but I'll call it the top of a flat white colour. <laughs> so there you go. That is that's a lovely colour. And this is the kind of colour I would actually say, go and knit this in just this colour, if you want it in a single colour. I think that would look really good. Kaz, how can I get knitting yarn from the shop? Well, the shop link, actually, I will put the link in for the shower scrubby here. And you can just go to the shop choose what you're after, put it in the basket and you go through checkout. Um, and we're here for you. I know you're in the UK, Kaz. I'm pretty sure you're in the UK. So go for it. You can get the yarn from the shop separately and you can get the kits from the shop separately. So choose what you'd rather have, the yarn or the kit. Okay, now then, what's next? So let's talk bathroom. We've already done through, gone through the shower scrubby. We have what I'm calling facial cleansing kits because it isn't just a face cloth. We have face cloths in the kit. So this is the beginner's kit. We have face cloths that are knit and pearl stitch. It's just moving between them. You're in Sheffield, Cass. That's cool. There we go. Facial cleansing kits. So face cloths. There you are. Nice and simple, but obviously everything comes in the kit. So you're all ready to go. And you can knit two face cloths and some extras, or you can knit three face cloths from the kit. You can decide. Now, this is a beginner's one. So it's simpler than the other one, but again, it looks complicated. But it's the knit stitch. It's the pearl stitch, and it's the yarn over. This is the theme of this collection. The main abbreviation we're using is the yarn over. That's it. So we have the net bag. And inside the net bag, all the leftovers can be used to create makeup removal kit pads. I'm sure so many of you in the past or still have used those little white cotton pads. I've bought cotton pads, cotton wool pads in the past. 
It's so helpful. Use them for years to take my makeup off. And I've obviously, da 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 da. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's it. That's the beginner's makeup pad. And there's a smooth side and an exfoliating side. If you struggle to get your mascara off, that's going to do it for you. And the idea is that you have a pile of these, and as soon as you use them, you put them in a net bag and it's ready to go in the washing machine with your shower scrubby and your flannels. They're the face cloth. There you go. That's what that is. So Joe is asking a question. I will just go over that and answer that. So we have the knit along separately, but this is another option for you in the shop. Go and get the face cloth kit if that's what you feel you like. And this one is the beginner kit. Again, you can pick any colour you like. It doesn't have to be turquoise. Just go ahead and see what you fancy. So a knit along um, is something where we knit the same thing at the same time as a group. I will release the tutorials onto YouTube for everyone to see. But if you're in the knit along, you get it early. If you're in the knit along, you'll also get into private chit chats with me. We will come on to something similar to this, but it's not live on YouTube. Um, you could even come on video if you choose. It's, you know, you don't have to, it's an option. Um, but it means that if you come on video, you can share what colour you're knitting, ask any questions out loud, and we can have a chat about it. And also, just let us know, everyone else in the group, let us know how you're getting on. Um, so we do that twice over the two weeks. The knit along lasts two weeks. And we knitted the baby blanket and the knit along in March. People started the knit along in March. I think a couple of people actually finished the baby blanket over that two weeks but lots of people were emailing me or mentioning it in the YouTube comments as the weeks went by I finished my blanket but they were in the knit along they'd enjoyed the knit along because it was getting to know everyone it was a community spirit and it was come on it's time to get started how many times have you got something ready to knit and it's just been put off how many times have you started knitting something and then something else feels more important? Being in the knit along just helps you feel excited about continuing with the knit and it means that you keep going. So those two sessions, one week and in the second week as well, it means that we get together, we see how we're progressing, we enjoy the journey and we enjoy getting together as the community and knitting together. Knit along it's basically the same pattern at the same time. Um, so yeah, we're all we all enjoyed that and it was great fun. And I do hope you'll be able to join us for the next one. So it's over two weeks, starting next Monday, and first week on the I think it's the Thursday. Obviously, if you're in there too long, I will let you know. We have the um get together. And then the following week is the Thursday or Friday. We have the get together as well. So there you go. That's what a knit along is all about. It's the community knit. And it's good fun. <laughs> so Laura says, I finished the baby blanket on that knit along and started another since I had such a great time. The result. Yeah, that's what it's all about. It's enjoying the pattern. Yes. And actually, that kind of knit then feels good because you have enjoyed the experience before. How many times have you knitted something that feels absolutely awful? So you've avoided that kind of pattern. You've avoided that kind of style. Ugh, you know, that kind of thing so much. What time? It's the, the you'll have a release of the tutorial on Monday morning and you can knit whenever you like. There's no you have to knit at a certain time because we're all there knitting at the same time. I don't have the times at the moment. I'll open up my calendar and have a quick look. Um, it's uh, this time next Friday. And then it's at this time the Saturday afterwards. So it's 3.15 on, on the 16th and 3.15 on the 24th. Okay, so that's when we're meeting up. Those are our meets. And of course, you can also send me your questions and any anything you're feeling confused about in the pattern maybe or any exciting 
results that you want to show everyone, you can send me an email or you can put the questions in the comments in the live ready to go. And if you can't make it to the live, then we can just use your input as part of the conversation anyway. Right. I hope that's, yeah. Joe says heart, thumbs up. Thank you very much. Good. I'm pleased that's answered your question. Okie dokie. So the other facial cleansing kit is for slightly more advanced knitters, but you know, you don't have to be an absolute whiz at knitting to be able to knit these. These are face cloths that just go a bit further. We're using double moth stitch, which I absolutely love. I first saw this at least 15 years ago. I remember exactly where I was. I was in the library, local library. A friend had appeared and I said to her, wow, that scarf's amazing. What stitch did you use? Because I obviously knew she did it herself. And she said it's the double moss stitch and she'd used a tweed yarn and it looked amazing. So this is the double moss stitch. It just goes that bit further. It gives you that texture that you're not expecting in a moss stitch. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, but with this one, you have a large smooth area and a large not so smooth area. And then there's a real exfoliating around the edge. Love it. Okay. So that's your exfoliating face cloths. And again, with this, you can... <laughs> Joe doesn't like moss stitch. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> you can get problems with moss stitch. It's on my list to do YouTube videos about why you get problems with moss stitch. It will happen. It's on my list. Promise. So again, you can knit three of these or you can knit two of these and a bag. This bag is fun because we use a provisional cast on. There's a tutorial for that coming up in a couple of weeks time. So there you go. Again, it's very similar to the beginner's one, but it's slightly more complicated at the top bit. We have a tunnel coming through the top that we do with a fancy cast on. That then is a drawstring bag for your double moss stitch makeup remover pads. So these makeup remover pads, you can knit with any leftovers, whether you've knitted the net bag or not. And if you're lucky, and you decide to knit three face cloths instead of the net bag, you may actually be able to get a fourth face cloth out of the leftovers. It's a possibility. It depends on the tension and how much yarn you've used already. But it's possible. You could just say, well, I've got a rectangle instead of a square for the fourth one. And you'd be happy with it. <laughs> if you don't want makeup remover pads, then that is an option, most definitely. But the whole kit is there. Everything in the pattern is there ready and waiting for you. So there you go. That's why it's a facial cleansing kit and not face cloths. There you are. So this is the lovely summer yellow. The beginner's kit I knitted up in the turquoise. And I think we just have a couple more colours that I haven't shown you. Yes. So those are the facial cleansing kits. And I must admit, I've wanted to do something with flannels, face cloths, dishcloths for a while. It's something that I created and I was selling as a digital pattern on Ravelry um, a few years ago. But kits, very important. Everybody loves knitting face cloths and they're really useful if beginner knitters are just wanting to do something a bit bigger and use a whole ball of yarn. A face cloth gives you that. So. Um, so yeah, I like that. Cheers, by the way. <laughs> I'm drinking cold water and it's pouring with rain. This weather is very strange. Oh dear. The problem with it being wet and warm is the garden is getting it feels it feels like a jungle out there so much is growing that you don't want to grow 
<laughs> and it's really difficult to keep on top of it with so much bad weather. Uh, right, back to the knitting. <laughs> what else have we got? We have the lavender bags. Now, I'm sure, I know that, I've been thinking about that, a lavender bag is, uh, do I want lavender bags or not? Surely grandmas use them. But they are really, really useful. The um, the thing with lavender bags is that it's kind of difficult. We have um, cooler, not not cold winters anymore. We have kind of coolish winters. We have warmer summers, so we have moths. And whether we like it or not, the prevalence of moths in and outside houses is increasing. So quite a lot of people I've spoken to, whether they're knitters or not, have got clothes moths. It's just a thing. So we have to manage them. We can't just say we're getting rid of them. It's it's kind of impossible. Um, but it's a thing. More and more and more and more. We have clothes moths. So we have a few options. There's cedar wood. And I actually have just a few examples here of what I use. You can buy all sorts of different shapes that they've cut cedar wood up into. And that's really helpful for moths. But the other thing that we have everywhere, especially in England, <laughs> is known. Quite a lot of places in Europe grow it. It's not just England, it's very, very prevalent in England. It's lavender. So this is why I created lavender bags. Lavender is a brilliant deterrent for moths, for any bugs that could get into your yarn. I have cedar wood all the way around the yarn in here, and it works. And I've also added some lavender bags. All of the lavender bags that I've knitted, I'm putting them around my yarn. I'm not storing them in the drawer. <laughs> They're around my yarn now. <laughs> so. You will get a pack of lavender and little, these are called tea bags. If you have loose leaf tea and you just can't be bothered with a teapot every time you just want to put it in a mug, you can put your loose leaf tea in your own tea bag, it's cotton muslin, and hey ho, you've made your own tea bag and then you can wash it and reuse it. But this is ideal for putting lavender in and then knitting out the lavender bags and putting them in. So this is why you get tea bags <laughs> when you come and get your lavender bag kit from me. So the lavender, you know, tea, two tablespoons in each bag and you're ready to go. And this is what we knit up. Little lavender bags there are three different patterns three stripes five stripes and more stitch there you are and you can use four different colors every ball of yarn i did see your question there laura is 50 grams so we have 50 grams of each color in your kit for your lavender bag and each bag i need my reading glasses on now each lavender bag one hundred and thirty meters one hundred and forty two yards there you go <laughs> I feel naked without my glasses um so we have fifty grams of yarn in each color and you will knit up five bags and they're really good. You can hang them in your wardrobe um, with the drawstring. And again, theme here, we make our eyelets with yarn over. Theme here, yes. You must have seen these because I've been mentioning these in a few of the YouTube videos in the last couple of months. Um, the sewing seams. I showed you how to sew seams with the lavender bags. And three needle cast off. I use the lavender bags for that too. 
So there you go. We have five that you can knit up. And you will very likely have leftovers with the yarn. So if you have leftover lavender, then you could definitely make up more bags. There you are. So that is the lavender bags. That's interesting, Laura. Being in the US, I sometimes forget not all home windows have screens. It's just not a thing that we even imagine here. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I suppose in the US, you actually end up with swarms of insects in some places, don't you? And pollen too. So, yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. So, yeah. It's not something we, we don't even have aircon. Why would we? It's cold here. So when it gets hot in the summer, just like in Canada, <laughs> you kind of go, I can't stand this. I'm used to it being cold. <laughs> Here in the South, pollen gets me every year, says Laura. Oh, yes. I've seen it. It's like snow on the ground, but it's yellow. Oh, my goodness. I could not cope with that. I can't imagine. I can imagine. Maybe some people's asthma really kick in at that kind of time of year as well. It must be tough. So those are the lavender bags. We've gone through a few things. We have your shower scrubby. We have your beginner's facial cleansing kit. We have your exfoliating facial cleansing kit. And we have the lavender bags. We are just like last time, we've got five new kits and five new patterns. So the last one is larger and it's using a different yarn. Let me show you the yarn first. These are the colours that we currently have in stock. It's Wool and the Gang Shiny Happy Cotton. So it's cotton again and it's easy to knit at this time of year. It feels calm, it feels cool. So there you go. The only difference between knitting this now and knitting this a few months ago is, I had them here somewhere, I'm using a slightly different size yarn. Uh, needle rather. Oh, there it is. Five millimeter needle with a five and a half. With the baby blankets, we were using five and a half. And I wouldn't suggest using them. I would love you to use the millimeter for this one. I'd say it's really important. So, that load of colors and the other colors are there. We only have oves in stock. We haven't got any eucalyptus green at the moment. We've got to do a restock. And I must tell you something as well. The um, yarn prices are going up this summer for Rowan and for Wool and the Gang. Not surprisingly, there have been shipping problems, not just with COVID, but with um, Brexit. And it's, it's also to do with the weather and the different climates, the climate changes across the world, the stock availability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's, I know it's happening, happening in a lot of industries. Unfortunately, it's just happening. <laughs> so yeah, so we have this at the moment. You really cannot see that pink very well. It's a beautiful, lustrous, mauvey pink. Just think of a rose pink, like a rose gold. It's that kind of colour. And there we go. We have, what's this? Pink? Turquoise waters, pumpkin orange, um, eagle grey and jog grey. And the yellow here is chalk grey. And this is mellow mauve. Chalk yellow, sorry. Chalk yellow and mellow mauve. So those are the colours for this next one. And yes, you need five millimetre needles. Quite long ones because we're knitting a large item in small pieces, smallish pieces. So first off, we have striped cushion. Don't feel you have to go any further than this. The striped cushion is like having a beginner and a, an intermediate kit in the same kit. So you can go for one or two cushions. I've given you the choice of getting enough yarn for one or two because if you get one cushion, you'll, you'll need four balls of yarn. If you decide to knit two cushions, you only need seven. It's just the amount that you use in that first one that gives you enough 
to knit up the next one with only three and the extras. So that's the front and the back is knitted in two pieces. We have the envelope of the cushion there. So there you go, that's in two pieces and you can see we have the rib at the top that side there too. So that's three pieces and I know you could knit from there all the way in one piece and back up to there. But I really do suggest you do not do that because when you're putting a cushion pad into a cushion cover, it sits so much better if you have seams down each side. It makes such a difference. I know I did keep the stitches on the needle at the top of this knitted piece at the front. And then when I'd knitted this one, I used the three needle cast off, so it was one less seam to so, but it still gave it a seam. And it makes a big difference to how the cushion sits on the sofa and how long it lasts actually, because it doesn't get pulled and dragged. If this was a single piece, it would, before you know it, it would be dragged halfway around the cushion pad and it wouldn't stay in place. So this is why I like to knit cushion covers in two or three pieces. So you have the envelope back or you just have a little top bit at the top. So I have knitted cushion covers in the past and it's my experience. It's the fact that I've knitted them before that made me just do three pieces instead of one, um, two. And it really does make a difference. So that's the one that I would suggest to your beginner knitter. If you want to knit cushion covers, you can knit one or two of these depending on the size of kit that you get. The next one is exciting. If you're brave enough. I was brave enough. I must say I don't do a great deal of this kind of colour work because I've had struggles with it in the past because I've made myself go too far too fast. But one piece of colour in the middle of a square is a lot easier than you think, especially if this one piece of colour is symmetrical. And I'm so happy with this part. It looks so much better than I thought it would be. I will be filming tutorials to show you how to do this. It's a very simple technique. It actually feel, looks more complicated than it actually is. You just need three balls of yarn, one, two, three, and you need to cross them in order, depending on what the chart tells you to do. So that is a heart cushion. And yeah, you, if you feel like a challenge, then go for it. If you feel like not so much of a challenge, and it's just the amount of yarn that you knit through, then go for the stripes. And you can swap the stripes over on the second um, cushion. Very, very possibly, I think it's probably very likely that you could do that because of the amount of yarn that you get. So, so if you fancy that instead, and switch that up and do that. And of course, if you fancy going crazy, then knit two hearts. Why not? So that's the other thing. That's the cushion kit or indeed the cushion pattern. There we go. Kaz says, I find it hard to do stripes on cloths. Well, dish cloths are small and it's you're going to see the ends. So with a um, cushion pad, you won't see the ends because you are sewing them together at the sides. So it will be easier. Um, shall I show you something? My first striping project from when I was a child, I was about eight or nine when I knitted this and I've still got it. I was so proud of it, but something went drastically wrong. So I didn't want to use it in the end and I never used it, never did anything with it. I just kept it because I was so proud of what it became. This, the fact that the tension was so good, made me absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. But look at all those ends. I just tied them in a knot. And I cut them off. So next, so far next to the edge that... I just felt so disappointed and I was so scared of that stripe coming undone. And it, it is, if I stretch it now, it's coming undone. So that 
that stripe is going to start unraveling before you know it. But I was so proud of the tension that I got in that. It's amazing. All the all the um, stripes and all the stitches are the same size. Never mind, eh? You live and you learn and you knit and you learn. There you go. Mel's Kitchen. The cushions look so nice. I would love to make it, but it's not something I can do at the moment. Yeah, I mean, those kits and those patterns will be there. It's, they're not going away just because we started the knit along or I start talking about something else. It will be there until I kind of, I know at some point, possibly next summer, I will say, okay, which kits are we going to keep? Which kits will we not keep? Um, I need to probably do a declutter by that time. So I will do that in the shop and I'll say some kits won't be here anymore. And I will warn you when they're going away, don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, just go for it. Those These kits will be here. Louise, hi Louise, it's nice to have you here. I just joined, been on the nights and managed to do half the front of the husband's jumper. Yes, 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 yes. That's brilliant, is it? So yes, you have to do your rounds and you have to make sure that everyone's okay, but you can sit there and knit. <laughs> Fabulous. Ah, oh, Kaz. Kaz is doing granny dishcloths, so she's struggling to do stripes on them. It's not the best pattern to do stripes with. We did stripes when we did the um, baby blankets, which are here. But they were massive stripes. It was colour blocks. It wasn't striping every other row. So they are possible, but I would say it's much easier on a larger scale. Certainly not on a granny dishcloth. You you may be able to find, I know you can find cakes of yarn which stripe for you. So that might be an option if you want an interesting colour effect when you're knitting dishcloths. Just just putting that thought out there it's an option we don't have any we don't have any yarn like that at the moment we just don't so don't know it's it's out there i know it is yeah yeah, yeah i'm sure it is it is easy to pick it up and put it down again that's the beauty of knitting yeah well done, well done, Louise. And uh, um, we were talking about this in the Knitter knit and Natter the other week, and uh, the other day in the membership. Knitting isn't just about achieving something. It gives you a really good feeling. It can help um, give you a meditative feeling when you are struggling with something. It can keep you grounded when you're in a busy environment. And I'm sure that's why a lot of people knit on trains, because you can focus and you don't have to notice everyone else doing so much around you. So, yeah, you can keep your focus on other things as well, what's important. But you needn't get in such a flap when things go wrong, because you've already been that grounded self as you're knitting. Really good. Laura. This is another Laura. Hi, Laura. Doing short striping two or three, is it easy to pull the, long, to pull the yarn along the wrong side or would you cut the yarn and weave it in? I do I do weaving it up. Actually, I'm doing that at the moment with a few of my samples that I'm knitting up. And yes, especially with thin yarn, you really do not notice it. If it's something that you won't see, i.e. it's the wrong side of a jumper or something and it will be definitely like down the sides of a seam by all means if it's a thicker yarn sit keep it up the side rove it move it up the side it's perfect um just do it <laughs> most definitely it will save you a lot of work further down the line and if you're weaving it ends as you knit it can actually make the rows feel very bulky and with a thicker yarn, it's really noticeable. Yeah, always. It's very safe. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. It's so easy to put down and pick up if a patient needs me. Yeah. Also, never have a pattern to follow or get lost otherwise. It's a good idea. Good idea. 
let from your brain instead of from someone else's. <laughs> yeah, if you're knitting like that. Cool. I love that. Knitting can help us in so many places and in so many ways. Brilliant. I love it. Does anyone have any more questions about the knits and the new collection? The knit along next week. I will be sending a few more emails just with the links to the kits, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, if you go to my website and you go right to the bottom of the page and you fill in that form there, then you will get in the right place to definitely have emails from me this week. If you go and sign up for a, an extra or something, then you might not get as many emails this week um, because it, you will be getting emails from me anyway with maybe a free PDF or some free videos or something. So wait until after the next week if you want to join the Knit Along and you want to make sure you get all the information about it. Go to the homepage, scroll to the bottom and sign in there. You can also go to knitwithhannah.co.uk forward slash waitlist. That will get you in and I will definitely see your um, email and you'll definitely get emails from me this week. Let me just go through all of them again. The knit along next week is the scrubby. You can pick any colours you like. That's the blue one. You know, people have so many different colours bathrooms. And I know a yoga teacher of mine, she had an avocado bathroom and someone showed a photo because she was so excited about her bathroom. She had a bathroom that was this colour, 1970s. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> it's so retro, it worked. So whatever colour bathroom you have, you can knit it. <laughs> you can knit a scrubby to match. <laughs> so then we have the cleansing kits with the face cloths, the net bags, go and the makeup remover pads beginners and exfoliating we have the lavender bags all sorts of different designs i'm dropping them all over the place <laughs> in different colors which you get the lavender bags with you get the lavender with and of course you have the stripey or the heart cushions so that's brand new in the shop. Any questions, you can email me. You can ask me here in the comments. Um, you can ask me on this week's, last week's video or next week's video as well. And if you join the knit along, you get the tutorial for the sh um, shower scrubby early. There are two tutorials, two tutorials, one to start it off and then one to finish it the following week. And... You get the two knit and natters, private knit and natters, where we all come together as a community and we enjoy knitting it together. Let me just drop the link to the new kits and the new patterns in the thing here. This, I'll pin to the top. There you go. So that link will send you to see all of the kits that we've just mentioned and indeed you'll see the shower scrubby in there that will get you into the knit along okay thank you so much for joining me today let me know if you've got any questions it's been great having you here to chit chat and to answer your questions i love that joe doesn't like moss stitch <laughs> oh yes Chantal mentioned that the yarn is soft this one of the reasons I chose it, I tested three different cottons from Rowan and it was, how does it knit up? What does it look like? One of them looked just far too shiny, so I didn't use that one. Um, and the soft factor, it was certainly part of it. This is lovely. Absolutely lovely. And the beauty of this is it does a DK in the same colours. So, it's all right, it does a four ply. This is a DK, but it also does four ply in the same colours. So watch out. At some point, we may have DK and four ply matching each other for some reason or other. 
Good on you, Rowan. Nice one. Um, there we go. I like that. Kaz, wouldn't it? A boxy top without a sleeve. Yeah. Why not? Go for it. Two rectangles. And you could even have a, what's it called? A sailor's collar? Can't remember. But it's just a straight collar. And you sew the shoulders and sew the sides up. You're done. Um, I'm watching the Great British Sewing Bee at the moment <laughs> in my knitting time, actually, and really enjoying the old episodes. I'd forgotten what happened in the old series, so i completely forgotten who won which series. I'm really enjoying just watching the whole process again, seeing them all learn more about sewing as the weeks go by. And I just see so much the connection with knitting. Sewing and knitting are so similar. You're thinking about colour, you're thinking about shape, you're thinking about form, thinking about what would suit who, when is it useful, all that kind of stuff. So, absolutely love it. Right. Yes, thank you for being here, Chantal. Thank you, everyone, for being here live. It's been great to chat. And if you ended up here at the end or you're just popping in now, then the replay will be up and available for you to see. Thankfully, I don't have to do anything. YouTube just sticks it up for you. So it's the same link. It's the same place and it will now be seen more vividly on the channel page. So if you want to come back, you know, in an hour's time or tomorrow evening or something and rewatch it, then feel free to do that then. And like I said, stick anything in the comments and I can answer any questions. The link, you will see the chat, but it takes a couple of days to process. But all of the links that I've mentioned and I've put in the chat will be in the description right from now so that's easy to to find as well okay thank you laura yes you have a great day too have a great day everybody hopefully we won't get any more rain but it looks like it could throw it down pretty soon again <laughs> bye for now everyone happy knitting